Charles and Ray, Designers at Play, A Story of Charles and Ray Eames, is a new picture book that celebrates two of the most iconic designers of the mid-century modern design movement. Hi, I'm Dan Skinner, and welcome to the Kids Bookshelf. Ahead, we'll explore the book and talk with the author about the inspiration behind it. James Yang is the author and illustrator of several acclaimed picture books, including A Boy Named Isamu, which won the Asian Pacific American Award for Literature, and Stop Bot, which won the Theodore Geisel Award. He joins us to talk about his new picture book, Charles and Ray, Designers at Play, a story of Charles and Ray Eames. James, welcome to the Kids Bookshelf. Hey, well, thank you for having me. I really uh, appreciate it and pleasure to meet you. You know, before we talk about the book itself, for those who may not be familiar with them, tell us about the Eames and their design work. I think the easiest way is there's a very good chance that the furniture, if you have any modern looking furniture in your house, it was probably influenced by Charles and Ray Eames. They're sort of uh, um, considered the masters of what is known as the mid-century movement of design. And their approach was to make modern looking furniture that was affordable and accessible so everybody could have what they felt like were was a beautiful house. And that's why they're very important. They, uh, you know, the cartoon series Jetsons, the, uh, the look of that show was very influenced by mid-century design and, and they were influenced by the Eames as well. One thing I learned from this book, it's a picture book, it's not written for adults, but I learned <laughs> things with this book as well, in that I didn't realize that they designed so many other things. I was just familiar with them because of their famous chair. Of course. Um, that's one of the interesting things, and probably you might even have seen their other designs and not even know it was theirs, like their, their wonderful cabinet, which is, I sort of do a variation that you even see on the cover, is very much an iconic design. And they also did film. They also made toys. They did books. Uh, like the title says, they were a very playful cu uh, couple with their work, actually, which is sort of why I wanted to do it, because I, I thought kids, of course, love to play. And it's a story about two designers who made basically play their life. Yeah, that was going to be my next question about why you wanted to share this story about them with children. You know, that's an interesting question. Part of it is almost <clears throat> a story for me as a child because uh, I used to get very frustrated, you know, if things didn't go my way. And then here is an example of a couple who actually thought trying and trying again when you at first did not succeed was fun. So that's a, one big reason that I wanted to do the book. It's almost to let kids know, hey, you know, it's, it's okay to just keep trying. And actually the trying part is the fun part. It's not always the final product. And they and Charles and Ray did mention that the Eames chair, which I show most in the book, was the hardest problem they ever solved. It actually took, you know, took many, many, many tries before they finally got it right. And another reason is that my previous book, A Boy Named Samu, is also about a mid-century sculpture where I imagine his childhood. And this book is also like an imaginary biography, but Hopefully, I feel like it rings true to their to Charles and Ray's story, and they were sort of a natural follow up as far as mid century giants go. And I I can't think of a creative person who would not want to do something about Charles and Ray. Eames. Do you have a copy of the book, Candy? Yes, I sure do. Would you read a small portion of the book for us to give sure. us a, a flavor of what readers will find here? Sure, I, I would be glad to. Ray asked, "What other problems can we solve?" What other shapes can we create? Charles liked to design chairs. Some chairs were plain. Some were too fancy. Many were uncomfortable. Charles said, let's design a chair that looks like it was born to be a chair. A natural shape that's beautiful and comfortable, that would be a modern chair, said Ray. They tried one idea, then another, and another, and another, and another, and another, and another. Many chairs would break. It felt like an impossible puzzle. Ray said, failure is not a bad thing. Charles agreed. Solving problems is fun. We have to keep playing around until we figure it out. Hmm. So one of the interesting things uh, that I learned 
is uh, that they drew from their experience of developing a splint for soldiers and learning how to bend plywood, and they were ultimately able to take that technique that they had developed and apply it toward developing this really famous chair. I was surprised to learn that too, actually, when I did research about the Eames. And uh, my story veers a little bit because actually Charles was working with E. Rose Saarinen before for a contest to design a chair. So they were sort of in the process. And then suddenly, this is during World War II, the Naval Department called them and asked them if they could design a more ergonomic splint. So, yeah, yeah. And I guess they sort of, I don't know if it was serendipitous or if the Navy knew that they had this machine that was bending plywood. So I don't know which came first. But then when they designed their uh, splint, like the story said, they realized, wait a minute, this is, it's very functional, but it's actually a beautiful object as well. So I think in a lot of ways, the split really inspired them both in function and how something could be beautiful, inherently beautiful as well. I'm talking with James Yang about Charles and Ray, Designers at Play, a story of Charles and Ray Eames, and our conversation will continue. If you're enjoying this discussion, please subscribe and hit the like button. And thank you. As I mentioned, I learned things reading this book. It's a picture book designed to be read to young children. When you were writing about the book, did you keep that adult in audience in mind as well? That's an interesting story. I, interesting question. I would say yes and no. I, my, the way I write books is I like to write books that I would have loved, liked to have read as a child. So I try to imagine, hey, there's this couple who are heroes of mine. And frankly, they were even like heroes of mine when I was a kid, when I saw their furniture. And it's like, well, how would I describe something, someone to kids and make them excited as I am? So that's sort of the way I approach writing. You know, like, hey, they did this, this and that. And they're like us, you know. So that was kind of my approach. Well, even though you may not have intended to, I found it interesting <laughs> as an adult as oh, well. And, and the reason I ask great. that is because... Children are read to by adults, and if the adult sure. doesn't like that book, <laughs> they don't want to read it a hundred times to their kids. So it's it's good that it appealed to both audiences. Oh, well, you know, I will say that I I do want to appeal to both, of course. You know, I want <laughs> parents to love the books also, and also um, I do like to read my books out loud to see how well they flow in the evening. And one of the nicer compliments I do get from um, parents is. They find my books very readable, you know, and they love the fact that it tells a story in a few words. So either, you know, reading time can be relatively short, or if the child wants to read it over again, the parents don't have any problems reading it over again. So I, I definitely keep the, like parents being able to read it out loud. That's always a big part of how I write the stories as well. Well, as you well know, in the world of picture books, often you have an author and an illustrator and they often work totally separate from each other with just an editor as a go-between. But because you're both author and illustrator, do you feel like that gives you a creative advantage? It, it does. And part of it is the flow The flow is a lot easier. And I, I'm very lucky. My team at Viking, I've been with the art director, Jim Hoover, for quite a few of my books. And uh, my new editor, Kmar Brass, and she's also the associate publisher at Viking. Um, we have great chemistry. So it's a very nice three-way collaboration. So it is smoother. And uh, I'm learning how to write. I'm getting better at writing. I'm an artist first, but the more books you do, the more you learn. And I'm starting to think of myself as a writer. So it's great to have her points of view and just little things about how to make the story a little bit more lively. So it, I feel like it's an advantage for sure. How would you describe your illustration style? You know what? I would describe it as a, it's a very colorful sort of designy style, that, that graphic, uh, bright colors. And I do feel like if you've seen my work, you definitely know that I'm the guy behind it. And that's, a, that's been one of the nicer compliments I've gotten from art directors is that they've seen my work evolve through the years, but there's something that's always me inside of it. So what more can you ask for? What is it that you enjoy about creating picture books? You know, I, I love the story. I love the permanence of the books. I love just the object. Like, 
actually, uh, with Charles and Ray, um, I even love the paper that we use this is, and how it really popped the colors off. So I love the craftsmanship and the fact when I do normal illustration for publications, you know, that's a story that's gone after a day, but books are forever. So I love that. And it's, it is sort of a fantasy because when, when I was a kid, I loved picture books as well. So it's, I'm still a little bit surprised that I'm able to keep making picture books and hopefully I'll continue to be able to make books. I think some people look at a picture book and they say, well, that must be simple, but that's deceptive because you have just a few pages, a certain number of words and a certain vocabulary generally that you can use. So it becomes a big challenge to put a book like this together. Oh, oh absolutely. And that's the challenge. I actually, I like the rule, so to speak. And, and I, and I personally, um, tend to go towards simplicity. Like even as an illustrator, I am known for taking complex ideas and distilling them and the images into a very simple, you know, a very simple image that communicates. So in a weird way, um, picture books is sort of the perfect medium for the way that I solve problems. And even my, uh, my team has told me that the one thing I do like is I'm pretty good at distilling a story in 40 pages and finding the essence of what's there, hopefully without making it overly simple. And, yeah, that's that's the part I really appreciate, and I don't, don't think people appreciate how hard it is to pull that off, actually. Now, you touched on this a bit already, but what do you hope kids will take from this book? You know, one, I hope they learn about Charles and Ray Eames. And then one thing that I also hope they learn is that, that they were a team, and they were a team of equals. And maybe Charles got more credit back in the 50s, but he always made it a point to like let everyone know that Ray was a big part of the collaboration. So I want them to see them as equal collaborators, that they both brought something special. So they learn about teamwork. I want them to learn about mid-century art in a weird way. Like, you know, they see the objects inspired, like, oh my, you know, I'm hoping that they like the look of those things and appreciate those things as they get older. And I hope that they learned, most importantly, that even learning or or if you're trying to figure something out, it can be fun. Even if it's not going your way, that's all right. That you you don't get mad at yourself if, you know, you failed the first time. It's that classic thing. If at first you don't try, first you don't succeed, try, try again. And I want them to enjoy, enjoy that. So what's next for you? Well, you know, I have a book coming out next year that's um, inspired by Carl Sagan. So that's the big one that I'm very excited to do. And I've been kind of on this roll lately ever since Isamu of picking uh people who are sort of my heroes as children as a child actually so it's sort of like my 1960s version of a child hopefully telling a child of today like you guys have got to know about these people so of course i really admired so he's my next thing on the horizon and then i have another book following that but that one's still we're still figuring out the ingredients for that one right now the book is charles and ray designers at play the story of Charles and Ray Eames by James Yang. James, thank you for talking with me today. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's been a big pleasure. So uh, thank you very much. Now, if you'd like to purchase Charles and Ray, Designers at Play, I placed a link for you in the description below. If you enjoyed this conversation, please take a moment to subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you for watching this edition of the Kids Bookshelf. And here are two more interviews you might find interesting. I'm Dan Skinner. Until next time, keep sharing the gift of reading.